Hello everyone and welcome to today's Kerbal Space Program video and it is not this, the SSTO I flew to Leith and Ilu, Jeb sitting there happily, we can just zoom out and see today's monstrosity. It is a gigantic rocket uh, bound for Tylo, there's my little flag there. And the thing that makes this rocket uh, unique and cool is the fact that it only uses one kind of engine, uh, the mainsail engine to be precise. The only engine you will ever see in any part of this video is the mainsail engine. I don't know why I decided to do this, I, I just didn't really know. I just thought it might be a, a fun little challenge to try and do, so see if it was possible to get to Tyler using only the main cell engine, and you know, spoiler alert, it is, I did it, that's something I did. And the reason I chose to go to Tylo is because I went to Eve not that long ago, and Tylo is a bit like Eve in that it's very, very difficult to do missions to, whereas Eve is, pop well, Eve is the hardest planet to take off from, Tylo is the hardest planet to land on, so it's kind of like they're two, the two kind of similar things in that regard. And Tylo is a lot harder to get to than Eve as well, and I'm not going to be doing any gravity assists to get there either. Obviously I'll be making my Tylo encounter as optimal as possible to save on fuel, but there's going to be no you know, ricocheting between Eve and Kerbin and things to get to the Julian system like you might be familiar with in my SSTO videos. So the only things I really need to get out of the way now for introductions are uh, links to Patreon and Discord and Twitter, all in the description. And there's also a craft file link in there as well, as well as a link to a music video version of this mission, which again I, I thought it turned out pretty well, so I'd recommend watching that. And that video is non-profit, it has copyrighted music, so YouTube makes all the money off that. It is blocked on certain devices though, so if it doesn't work, try on PC. So yeah, so I feel like I don't really need to do too much talking about this mission, because I guess you guys have kind of all seen missions like this, if not to Tylo. Just kind of a sta it's a sty it's a standard direct ascent mission. There's going to be just the whole thing will go to Tylo, the whole thing lands, the whole thing comes back. There's no docking or anything involved. It's a pretty simple mission. I feel like I were, if I was just describing every single detail, it would get boring fast. So instead, let's have another issue of story time with Matt. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, happens happened to me that not many people get to experience is what it's like going on placement as a student. So my degree um, was in like eyes. So, uh, as part of my degree, I had to spend uh, about nine months of placement in various ophthalmic departments around the UK. And during these placement uh, placements, I would have to stay in the hospital accommodation on site, which is like traditionally known as the nurses' homes. And some of these places were pretty staggeringly terrible uh, places to live. Um, and one of the worst ones, there were quite a few bad ones, but one of the worst was uh, in London in a place called Whitechapel, if you're familiar with London. If you're not, you may have heard of Jack the Ripper. Uh, he operated in Whitechapel. It's not a great area. It's not a very nice area. And so the picture the scene, there's me, uh, some idiot 20-year-old, I think. Or was I 19? I think I was 20. Uh, just my, my suitcase, my bloody headphones on, jacket and things, walking out of Whitechapel Tube Station at 9pm in January, so it's pitch black and raining. And the first thing you do, the first thing you see when you come out of Whitechapel Tube Station is a giant abandoned building. <laughs> which says Royal London Hospital on it. Uh, I think the, the main hospital is behind this giant abandoned building, and they can't knock down the giant abandoned building because it's, uh, it's a listed building, which means they can't knock it down, or, or maybe they're planning to restore it, I, I can't really remember to be honest, but, but that's the first thing you see. So you kind of have to walk down this very small street uh, in between, a sort of a, in this gap in the abandoned building uh, to get to the main hospital. So kind of got there, went inside, walked down the corridors to find the security desk, said, Hi, I'm a student. Um, I think I've got a room in the in uh, John Harrison House, which is the name for the block for the on-site accommodation. And they said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, here's your keys. Handed me an envelope. Um, and he said, it's just down there. And he gestured out the glass doors to down this sort of unlit, pedestrianised street. So I, I kind of sort of, I, I didn't know if he was joking at first, but he wasn't. So anyway, I went off down, I walked plotted down the street, got to the way to the end, uh, and saw the block of flats for the first town, first time. Now, I didn't realise uh, before this point that a building can actually look sad. But this building did. <laughs> it's just like it was about to fall down about 20 years ago, and now it's just lost all will to live. So I walked up the steps to the building, and I'm greeted by uh, what ca I can only imagine to be a repurposed bank vault door. It was this just solid metal thing. So I, I opened the envelope and had like a little swipe card inside. So I touched it against the this sort of uh, tab thingy next to the door. And it groaned open very slowly. And I go inside. And it's like the scene 
from a horror film inside. I feel like you guys probably think I'm exaggerating here for comedic purposes. And trust me, I'm trying to remain as neutral as possible in the way I describe this building. There's a, a vending machine on its side, uh, off, just just there. There's like a, a bulb flickering in the ceiling and two sort of lifts or elevators for my American friends. So I go up to the lifts and they, they, they look weird. It's a very narrow doorway. It's kind of like, you know, like a standard door in someone's house. It was that kind of size dimension for the lift door. It was really strange. So I called the lift. Uh, I looked at the envelope that had my room key in it, and it said 616, which, you know, some people believe that to be the devil's number, so good start. And, uh, well, at this point, the lift arrived, and it kind of went ping, and the door kind of went <coughs> and sort of stopped halfway open, so I kind of had to very awkwardly help the lift open to get inside, sort of shuffled inside with me in my suitcase. That was the lift full. So I pressed uh, floor six on the button. Whole thing kind of... <coughs> closes very very reluctantly and the whole thing rumbles into life like the blooming space shuttle on re on re-entry it's like chugs up very slowly it's like it's got a diesel engine just lifting it up so i get to floor six kind of grinds to a halt and just stops i'm like okay doesn't look like the lift door's going to be opening i don't imagine that anyone's going to rescue me uh so i'm probably going to die here um so I started just, you know, thinking about my life before deciding, actually, let's just try floor seven. So I floor seven, press the button, a whole thing rumbles into life, chugs its way up to floor seven. I hear floor seven. <coughs> lift doors, you know, try and open. Turns out this lift opens on all the floors except floor six. So I had to go to up to floor seven, use the concrete fire escape stairs to go down to floor six, then back into the main building bit and find found my room. So I go to my room, and the first thing I see is, oh, there's no duvet. Well, I say there was a duvet on the bed, but um, I'd say it was more like just tissue paper, is how I would describe this sheet that was on the bed. Uh, didn't Certainly didn't provide much, uh, much protection against the cold air of January. Um, didn't help that the window was open. Uh, when I went in, the curtains were just billowing because obviously I was six floors up in London on a cold January night. The wind, the curtains were blowing around. So I thought, ah, well, the first thing I can do is close that window. No, you idiot. Can't close the window. It's bolted open. It's the kind of window that, you know, have you ever seen those windows where you sort of slide them down and that's how you open them, you slide them up and down. It had been slid down to leave about an inch of, you know, gap there or two inches. Uh, and then bolted and painted and sealed like that. So it's just constantly open all the time. So the room was freezing. I had to go to Sainsbury's and buy some duct tape and just sort of stuff the hole with tissue paper and things to try and, you know, get some insulation in. So I thought, you know what? Uh, let's just let's just make the most of this situation. I've had a long day. I've been traveling. I'll just go and have a shower, you know, get freshened up and I'll feel a lot better. So I go down to the... Obviously, we don't have on suites in this accommodation. I go down to the the area where the, the, the bathrooms are. And uh, that's where I see that there are there are actually no showers. There are no showers in this building. What we have uh, are communal bathtubs, which somehow appeared to be older than the building itself. <laughs> it was kind of like, it was they were clearly meant to be white. The rim at the top of the tubs were kind of a sort of a cream color. And then just as you got further and further into the basin, it became sort of grey, grey, dark grey, all the way to the bottom. And there was no plug hole either, so you couldn't even have a bath. What I had to do every morning was I would go, I would get into my dressing gown, walk down the corridor to the kitchens, get a saucepan, walk back to the bathroom, sit in the bathtub with the pan, pouring water over myself. I didn't even have a flannel or a sponge or anything, because normally I just, you know, when you're in a shower, you just whack shower gel on your hands and just, you know, clean yourself like that. So I, 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 I had like a clean dishcloth that I hadn't used yet, so I just used that. I don't know why I didn't just buy a sponge, but there we go, that was student me saving money. So that was me every morning. And by the second week, I had, I found a plug that wasn't attached to a chain, so I used that and decided to run a bath, at which point I realized that the water wasn't actually clear. I liken it to the colour of lem sip, so that was a, a fun revelation to have, that apparently I'd been cleaning in coloured <laughs> water, which is always a nice thing to discover. Obviously it goes without saying this place didn't even have, it didn't have Wi-Fi or internet, of course it didn't, so I played a lot of Kerbal Space Program on my laptop, people ask me how I got 
good at Kerbal Space Program. It's that when you live without Wi-Fi or anything, all you have is a few Steam games, and that's it. You, I played a lot <laughs> offline. This is for a month I had to live in this flat. So yeah, everything else just kind of just generally bad. You know, like the area wasn't great. I went to Tesco one day, um, but after that, someone smashed the front windows in and they had to close it. So couldn't use that Tesco more than once. <laughs> and uh, just everything else just wasn't that great. I went down to the uh, the washing machine area to use the washing machine. Funny, funny that, isn't it? Uh, put my clothes in put my powder in and things set it off just i like to just watch the washing machine to make sure it starts working what it did it kind of went, and i just i could see in the window just dumped all the powder onto everything then just started pouring water on top of it and then at this point washing machines normally then start to spin this one just kind of went and i could see the drum just sort of oscillate like very very half-heartedly just sort of vibrated a bit and then nothing and then 10 seconds later Turns out it doesn't actually rotate. I came back to my clothes to find the top clothes were just sort of had had been sprinkled with powder and were slightly damp, and the ones at the bottom were completely untouched. So, uh, luckily, my uncle lives in London, so I went and used his washing machine. But that wasn't that wasn't a fun thing either. And just the immediate area around the flat was really weird. I think it was like there were a lot of drug dealers around or something. There would be these. There'd be these big flash cars just pull up and just face each other. There's like a black BMW and a Mercedes one night, just parked across the street from each other, and like there was just and then just like a big group of men would just get out and just look at each other. It was really strange. I don't know if it was some sort of Breaking Bad esque meetup or things. I was in my on the kitchen balcony at the time, so I thought about shouting something, but you know I'm far too much of a massive coward, so I didn't. But yeah. I mean, they could have got to me anyway, because the balconies all had nets around them. I'm assuming to stop you from killing yourself, living in this place, but... Well, that's... that was the flat. And that was a story. And that was this mission, all splashed down nicely. So, um, I hope you enjoyed my rambling, and I hope you enjoyed the footage you saw on screen. Uh, there are some more videos now. Top left will take you to the music video, uh, which again, I, I liked the way that came out. Top right will take you to a mission to Eve, which, like I said earlier, is the other side of the coin with Tylo. It's the hardest place to take off from. And bottom right was chosen by YouTube's algorithm just for you. So other than that, Twitter, Patreon, Discord links all in the description. And have a good uh, day.